So Paul, it seems to be a yearly thing now. We're talking about another FA Cup first round tie and another one on the telly. Must be great from a finance point of view. It's unbelievable, isn't it? I've been involved four years with the club now. I came in um, August, September 2016 and um, this little club, Oxford City, in the National League South, uh, yeah, I'll help Justin um, get the club back on track again. Really exciting project and in the first year we, we beat Colchester in, in the first round and we, and we went on to just lose to Notts County. And I think we got the bug then and we thought, wow, this is amazing. And the FA Cup, is a, it's a totally different feel to it, isn't it, than what you get in a normal league game on a, on a Saturday afternoon. And, and it's not just um, about the, the money you get from the FA Cup, it's the whole, whole experience of it. And uh, you get good supporters at this level. You know, the, the support tends to be bigger in non-league and in the lower divisions for the FA Cup. And um, that first year, the memories of that Notts County game, the good ones and the bad ones, you know, the losing in the last seconds of the game, you know, we thought we'd got a replay back here again. And then the following season, we're doing it all again and we're at Tramia Rovers. And um, at Tramia Rovers, we're actually winning the game going into the last minute and we're thinking, wow, what's going to happen here? And I'm, I've said it so many times before, you know, we weren't that far away from playing Tottenham, were we? You know, it's, <laughs> it, it, it was a dream. And um, we think, can this keep happening? And then last year we got to the first round again and, and it was Solihull Moors. And if you could have hand-picked a team to beat Oxford City, Solihull Moors were probably the team that were going to beat us because the style that they played w wasn't really um, our, our style. And so we had three years running and we thought, well, is it going to come to an end? How, how long can this go on for? And then here we are again, you know, first round again and um, another league club. Um, and it's, it's absolutely brilliant for the football club. It's just such a shame it's behind closed doors. Um, but at least... Um, BT Sport have recognised it's a it's a game worth putting on the TV. Um, it is a local derby. We're only we're only 40 miles apart. Um, you've got the two managers both played for Man City, and so I don't know if there'd be any um, sort of uh, rivalry between the two of them. And um, you know it's, um, it's it's on on paper it's got the potential to be a good game. When, when you've got um, a non-league team at home, tight little ground, 3G pitch. I'm sure Northampton are, are dreading coming here. So, and like you say, it's um, it brings in some extra money especially as we're playing behind closed doors now and um, the, the prize money is less than last year. The FA have had to drop the prize money a bit so it's always, it's always good to get on, on the TV and uh, that helps us um, a little bit more in the finances. How different would your task have been over these last few years without that, without these runs? Oh, it's massive. Um, you know, four years ago when, when Justin and I took over the club, um, as everybody knows, the club was in financial difficulty. And um, we had some tough decisions to make. It was, you know, what do we do with the football club? Do we um, take, pay, take um, a, a big, massive cut in the playing budget? And um, if, we, if we'd have done that at the time, we'd have probably ended up getting relegated and go down to a different level. It's really hard to get back into the South. I mean, National League's tough to get into. And um, we made the decision at the time, that we'll, let's see how things go. Let's, let's, let's try and stay in the division we are while we, while we regroup. Um, we'll, we'll manage the, the finances of the club and, and let's see what happens. We, there was a lot of work to do and uh, the first thing I did was put a budget together, like what do we need financially to be able to service the, the, the debts that we've got. But at the same time, if we want to stay where we are um, in the same division, what do we need to bring in? And the first thing Justin and I said was we need a 3G pitch. Um, the pitch at the time, if anyone remembers yeah. it, this time of year would have been a bog. We wouldn't be playing Monday. The I think first to, game off, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah. From, the, from the rain we've had in the last few weeks, I think the pitch would have probably still been unplayable now because it was always underwater in the winter. In the summer, it was a dust bowl. And, uh, and the, the biggest thing for us was if we could get a 3G pitch down, then that would totally transform the site because we already had the other 3G that we'd hired out and that brought in income for the club and with a netball as well. That was what really got, got us um, in, into the National League South, if you like, because we, we, we don't run on big attendances here. And um, most of the clubs in our division are, are much more highly supported than what we are. So we have to have something different to be able to keep us where we're at. So we have our college programme, which has now been re retitled as the Velocity Academy. Um, so we've got the, the 16 to 19 year olds for the Velocity programme. We have the pitch hire, we have the netball. And that brings us in the extra income that we've got that we're not getting from the fans, and that's the only way that we could survive at this level. Um, having to pay the debts back as well made it obviously much more difficult. So we thought, right, let's get the 3G pitch down. How are we going to afford it? And I know that Colin Taylor, he was desperate to get the 3G pitch down, and um, and he was trying to raise the, the funds for it the year before, and never quite managed to get it over the line. So, so we really carried on what all the hard work that Colin and the rest of the team had put together, and we just wanted to see it through to the end. And uh, and thankfully, Daryl Eels came along um, from Oxford United. Um, 
he had a project in mind for Oxford United. He needed somewhere for his academy to go. So we worked together with Dara Leals and, and between us we managed to get the, get the 3G put down. And that's brought in so much extra income that it, it meant we could service the debts that we had and put a budget together for the playing staff to keep us in the division. And if you look at the, what we've done the last few years, we haven't been a million miles away from the playoffs, have we? You know, I think on the points per game last season, we were about eight points behind the, off the playoffs, bearing in mind we were bottom in October. Um, and, and previous years, we've, we've been sort of mid-table safe. You know, we've never looked, like, um, looked likely to go down. We've never looked likely to go up. We haven't troubled um, promotion or relegation at all at any point in the season. Um, so um, it's, it's been great that we've been able to do that. And um, now is the time when we really wanted to push on. We brought Dave Oldfield in um, in, um, in February and the plan for, this, for, for last season and for this season was to try and take the club forward. Let's have a chance of trying to get us into the playoffs. And, uh, and, and here we are, we've been playing pretty well this season. And uh, it's only, I know it's only uh, how many games in, four games in in the league. Um, four or five games in, there's a long way to go yet, but I think we've already shown signs that, that we've got a good playing squad here and, uh, and so we're, we're, we're quite hopeful we'll have a good season. Does that TV money just compensate for the behind closed doors element? It, ha it helps, um, yeah. it, it helps. I mean, one, of, one of the disappointing things is that the TV money the TV money's been dropped, um, yeah. it's, it's half what it was last year. The FA Cup prize money has also been half from what it was last year. We know the FA I think they've lost 250 million um, this year because of COVID, so there's not enough money in the in the pot, so they've had to drop the prize money. Um, but thankfully, the, you know, the teams that lose also get something. So if you win, you get some money. If you lose, you get some money. So it's not it's not all lost. Uh, I mean, one of the things I dreaded when the when the first round draw came out, I thought, what about if we get Carlisle United away and it's behind closed doors and there's no money for the loser? You're going to go to Carlisle two days, you know, an overnight stay. You're going to have to pay half the referees' fees, all the travelling costs, and if you lose, you get nothing. I mean, that's, that was a nightmare. Um, but but the, um, the FA actually changed their mind the day before and said, actually, what we're going to do now, we're, sh we're sharing the prize money. So in the first round, the, the winners get some money, the losers also get some money. So if you do have a, a, a long distance to travel, you've, you've got some of your costs covered. So, um, you know, all, all funding that comes in is, is great wherever it comes from. And we're, we're, we've been very lucky so far this year. Um, We've got the money from the National Lottery that, that's come from via the government through the National Lottery, which has helped. It's not just for replacing the gate receipts, it's for replacing income that the mm. club have lost. And there's, I know there's been a lot of talk around uh, about the larger clubs at our level complaining that why do Oxford City get the same as, as Maidstone United, etc. Um, and it's not just about the lost gate money. You know, We've also lost a lot of uh, money from our commercial partners by not having people in the stadium. We've lost money on beer sales and food sales. and. Uh, We've lost money on pitch hire, and uh, so there's, there's lots of other areas of, of um, funding that we're, we're not getting that we were getting previously, and also um, during the pandemic, a lot of the football foundation grants were suspended. Um, being a community club and a charity, we also get lots of funding, and uh, that was all put on hold from March onwards. So, so we've lost lots of money in other areas. So, to get money in from from the football foundation um, or the national lottery, um, and obviously the TV money as well is brilliant, and. Uh, if we could go one, one step further, it would be even better. But, you know, it's just good to be where we are. Yeah, so just uh, moving away from the Cup game, obviously the season behind closed doors moved quickly to get a streaming service in, in place. I mean, is that a very easy decision from your, your side? Oh, what a nightmare that was, wasn't it? Um, suddenly, um, somebody came along, I think it was Mick, said, oh. it was about a month before a company approached us and said, oh, how would we fancy streaming our football around the world? And... And at the time, it was illegal. The FA, you cannot stream games on a Saturday afternoon because of the rules between three and five. And so we thought, that's a non-starter, we can't do it. And Because uh, we thought we'd be starting in October with supporters, didn't we? And, uh, and uh, so we thought, yeah, uh, can't do that. But um, it's, it must be really difficult, because I remember when BT Sport came here two years ago, when we had the Tranmere game here, they were here for like a week setting up. And there was equipment everywhere. The whole place had been taken over. And I thought, my God, it must be really difficult to set up streaming. But Mick said, no, it's really easy, talk to this company. And we had a, we had a demonstration from a company, and it's basically a couple of cameras and a, and a mixing desk, and it's all in a couple of boxes. And it takes an hour or two to set up, but it's not a lot of equipment, and all you need is a really good um, internet connection. Um, not, not on a Wi-Fi, it's got to be done through a hard wire, to, otherwise you end up with um, um, outages. But um, when we actually looked at it, we thought, actually, this isn't, this isn't that complicated. What do we need? And we need a lot of money to be able to afford to buy the system. We need someone to operate the camera. Well, we've got a great cameraman with, with Daniel. 
Um, who can we have on the um, on the commentary? So we've got Dave Waldridge, who's our match day announcer. There wasn't really a need for match day announcing because there's no one in the stadium. So we said, okay, David, do you want to become the commentator? We've got Patrick Locke, who can help us out in whatever area we want. And uh, so we've got loads of, of people that are working around the club that can do it. And um, we said, okay, let's have a go. Let's let's see if we can do this because we want to try and get the football out to the supporters. I know we haven't got thousands of them, but at least the ones we have got, we want them to watch the, watch the football because we had a feeling it was going to be a decent season for us. And imagine if we hadn't been streaming the games that we've had down here, it would have, it would have been disastrous. So, so we said, no, we're, we're going to invest the money. Um, it's not really the time to spend a lot of money, but we thought, well, it's an investment that if, if we're in for the long term behind closed doors, hopefully we'll get the money back again. Um, I can't see any fans coming back before Christmas. Um, I can't see them coming back in the numbers we'd expect until maybe the middle of next year. So I think the stream is here to continue. And um, so I think overall it'd be a good investment. Um, in, in the second week, actually, Banbury United asked if they could hire our equipment for, the, for their FA Cup game because they were sold out. So we've actually looked at making money in, in other ways by hiring out the equipment. Um, and we're also looking at streaming other, other games. So we had, um, we had an RAF game lined up to stream live. We had a university game up to stream live. So there are other income streams we can get from, from, um, from, the, from the system. So, so yeah, so overall I think it was a, it, it was a really good choice. Um, we chose the right company. And I've looked around at what other um, um, clubs have done. And there's been different levels of success. Some have, have said that it's very difficult to get onto the system at all or it keeps crashing. Um, and we had a few technical problems at various points, but I think overall we've provided a really good quality service and everyone that I've spoken to has said it's been really good, so we're really pleased with it. So. Yeah, just finally from me, it's like, however much I'm sure you're delighted that BT cameras are down, I'm sure there's still that bit of disappointment that we can't allow fans to attend on Monday night. Yeah, definitely. Um, football without fans isn't, isn't the same, is it? I mean, you watch it on the TV, and you've got an empty stadium, no one watching, it's not, not quite the same atmosphere. Um, and that's really showing with Monday night when BT Sport, uh, um, when they come down, they'll often bring about 16 cameras with them because they've got cameras in the crowd, they've got cameras everywhere. I think they're only bringing eight cameras on Monday, so they've got half the number. So there's nothing to watch apart from the game. They, they can't be focusing on the crowd and things. And um, you know, when you're, it's a social occasion. At Oxford City, when people come to football, you're with your mates, you talk to people, we all mix together, the players talk to the supporters, and it's like a social occasion. So we've, we've lost a lot of that, and that, that's a real big shame, like David said earlier, it's such a shame that the supporters aren't allowed in. Um, we know it's not going to be forever. Um, what we hope is that when we do get supporters back in the ground, we're still playing as good as football as we've been playing the last few, few months. And um, we're in a good position in the league. And what we want to see is we want all the fans to come back in bigger numbers, though. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's, it's not just about the football match. It's about the whole occasion at Oxford City. And, and in the last four years, what Justin and I have been trying to do is make the experience better for everybody. Not just on the field, but off the field as well. And make it a good, enjoyable day out. That's what we're trying to aim for. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Paul. No problem.